Attention Boone County citizens. The school board will be voting on a panorama contract this Thursday, September 14th, and it's for over $200,000. This is the survey program the district is rolling out across the county at all public schools. As you will see later in the presentation, these surveys are asking kids personal information. They're using psychological profiling and the questions being asked. These survey results will be with them for the rest of their school career and beyond. Contact your school board rep and tell them to vote no on the panorama contract that is creating a dashboard for your child. We want to thank Karen from Moms for Liberty for attending the teaching and learning meeting and helping with this podcast. Parents, panorama equals surveys equals psychological profiling. And we're going to present to you the information we learned at the teaching and learning committee. In a previous video, about six months ago, we had an IT expert um, describe panorama and tech companies obtaining data on our children. And you can visit that podcast called How Schools Are Implementing Digital Slavery. Link will be in the description. Okay, so we are talking about panorama. But Panorama goes hand in hand with their goals of Portrait of a Graduate because Panorama is going to be assessing your child and their psychological profiles of whether they're meeting these values and competencies. Okay, so we like integrity. That's fine. Um, my problem with this is they have in global citizenship. They did what was called local laboratories where they were supposedly getting community input to come up with these values. However, the parents who attended this said they were pre-selected values for us to choose from. And if you go to portraitofagraduate.org, you will see that there as well. These are not unique. This is an engineered um, way to get consent. It's a manufacturing of consent. But Portrait of a Graduate is Panorama. It, they're all working together, including Ed Leader 21, including Battelle for Kids, and you know, if you have time, take time to research these companies and see who's running them, funding them, their um, reports. It'll give you a full rollout of the entire agenda. And it's global. For those parents who don't understand what global citizenship actually means, you want to go look up Global Citizenship United Nations Goals, and it will give you the definition that they're actually referring to. The United Nations, the World Economic Forum, have had a goal set out for a global education, and it's coming through uh, the Gates Foundation, Chan Zuckerberg Initiatives. So if you go look up portraitofagraduate.org, which is where all these templates that they're using are coming from, you will, one, see the funding comes from Zuckerberg, Chan, and Gates Foundation. Um, the Portrait of a Graduate was rolled out by Jason Glass, our Education Commissioner in Kentucky, and Tony Wagner of the Gates Foundation, who wrote the Education Agenda. There is an agenda to create what's called a hive mind through these measures, how they're psychologically profiling your child and plugging in interventions. And we're going to show you the complete rollout in Boone County Schools. So this was one of the slides presented at the Teaching and Learning Committee meeting. Um, if you look up in the left-hand corner, it's 2425, so let's fast forward. So in addition to the goals stated in the previous slide, each stakeholder group will work to, one, track student progress weekly across academics and social, emotional, and behavioral progress, monitoring protocol for students, receiving tier two and three services, gather reliable data from student feedback surveys, um, specific topics may be given formatively. Apply advanced data analytics to ensure student success using visuals, data dashboard, and heat maps. Disaggregate data across subgroups and compare to national and state benchmarks. Again, who is plugging in these analytics? Because it's panorama. It's not your school. It's not individuals um, or counselors. Again, these are psychological profiles. They are technically doing psych evaluations without a license. Um, so 2526, in addition to the goals stated above, each stakeholder group will work to cross-reference cross Portrait of a Graduate Student-Led Defenses of Learning Progress survey results to determine school and district growth areas, implement kindergarten, first and second grade survey interview tool based on questions related to Portrait of a Graduate. And later in this presentation, we actually show you what those questions are. 
So the year's 2026-27 school year, in addition to goals stated above, each stakeholder group will work to collect valid and reliable data with a library of research-based measures, including surveys designed for students, families, teachers, and staff, while using secure mobile-friendly data collection, advanced data analytics. Visualize and interact with data using dashboards and heat maps. Disaggregate data across subgroups. And then 2728, in addition to goals stated above, each stakeholder group will work to have the MTSS system fully operational at the school and district level. Panorama is the comprehensive dashboard used with fidelity at school and district level. Educators and administrators are proactively using holistic data, that's their buzzword, which means encompassing every bit of data they have on the child, the whole child, to ensure, ensure student success which their student success, the measurements are a portrait of a graduate and what Panorama has put in there. Playbook. Yeah, here is the Panorama Playbook. Parents, seriously, pause the video, zoom in, look at this. Everything in one place. Nightly syncs with CIS assessment systems put attendance, academics, behavior, and SEL data at your fingertips. If you look up data that's actually been collected on SEL because it's been rolled out for over a decade, it actually shows SEL is more of a detriment and a distraction and it actually has failed. But we keep using it, keep using it people. So then it's understandable data. Intuitive dashboards means you don't need a background in data analytics to take informed action. What does intuitive dashboards mean? Is that AI? AI programmed by Panorama to tell you when to intervene on a child's education so that you can address their social emotional learning because they just, they don't think right, right? And then recommended research and evidence-based strategies based on student data and goals, um, receive intervention recommendations from the 700 plus research-based strategies from Panorama's playbook. Again, you're relying on Merrick Garland's son-in-law and a bunch of venture capitalists to plug in interventions for your child based on what they think they need, based on algorithms that they plugged into the system. District school and student reporting. Um, again, it's clear reporting based on the strategic goals and so that they can make data-driven decisions. But just think who's plugging in those algorithms to intervene on your child's academics, social, emotional learning, and behavior. Can we not just focus on educating our kids how to read, write, and do some math? Seriously? How much time and money is this taking away from our kids in the classroom? How does Panorama provide a solution? Consistent intervention tracking and progress monitoring. System and systematic approach to MTSS, which is what KDE, Jason Glass, and all of them created which we're paying for a coordinator for this position as well with your tax dollars. So it's to monitor social emotional behavior, um, research based interventions. We already saw that it's research that Panorama plugs in and the AI flags the interventions. And you know what? Our teachers wouldn't know any better because they don't have psychology degrees. A math teacher does not have a psychology background. They should not be expected to do anything but teach math. If they see a kid struggling, they are spending more time with these kids than these kids are spending with their families. Think about that. If a human teacher sees that one of her students are having a problem, why isn't there just a conversation? Like, are we disconnecting from community and people to put plug and play interventions here and counting on technology instead of human interaction and creating the sense of community and care? Like this is gonna do more detriment to the emotional and behavioral health of our students. So this was part of the presentation where they described your child's going to have a G Suite all on their own, again in Google, because, you know, they're not stealing data or doing anything with it either. But they were talking about this G Suite's going to follow your student to every school they go to. So providing year over year student data as student moves from elementary school to middle school to high school, preventing them slipping through the cracks. They're trying to push this statewide right now. So you do need to contact your legislators because they want a child who goes from Boone 
to Fayette or Jefferson or to another county in the state that this information is still being tracked and they're still using these implementations, this framework, these goals. This is intended for the three pathways workforce pipeline. You know, they're gathering the information so they already know what direction if your child is going to be sent through university, military, or straight to a corporation. The Chamber of Commerce is fully on board with this whole program. So what that tells me is that this data doesn't actually stop with the schools. There is a plan to take this data with them. And here's the thing, people. Boone County School, if you work for them, you need to sit through a Microsoft EdTech seminar. They will explain to you when you are creating these digital records that they are forever. They call them digital DNA. And a child cannot comprehend that when you make a note in a dashboard that these are permanent records that will be here forever. We don't know Panorama, who they're sharing data with or what happens with this company going forward, where that data goes and how it can be used to manipulate somebody. This is a very serious, <laughs> I think it's a crime to be doing this to kids. There are um, certain laws in place to protect students, children under 18 from data mining and from doing this exact thing that our schools are trying to implement. There are laws in place. PII, PPRA is for the surveys, COPA and FERPA. So parents, at the very least, you need to be opting your kids out of any of this stuff. And we'll put a link in the bottom where you can get a template to do so. But we need to contact our school board members and our state legislators leave our kids alone our students and their futures are at risk but these dashboards there's several impacts which will include teachers recording negative data through these dashboards and creating negative stereotypes of these students which could hamper their future success and it could also create a scenario where teachers might have preconceived ideas about their students before they even meet them based on assessing their histories which could lead to self-fulfilling prophecies Here's some examples of survey questions. Currently, I most strongly identify as genderqueer, non-binary, or fluid, female, male, transgender, or prefer not to answer. Another question is currently I identify as heterosexual, straight, LGBTQ+, or prefer not to answer. Parents, if you have not opted out of these surveys, you need to. If not, discuss with your children regarding not sharing personal information on surveys, social platforms, gaming sites, etc. Ever. Here's some questions that ask about behavior. How carefully did you listen to others' point of view? How much did you care about other people's feelings? And how well did you get along with students who were different from you? And how often you, did you compliment others' accomplishments? If kids are on Chromebooks, they're filling these out and it takes about 30 minutes. And do we know if kids are filling these out accurately or even understands the questions? Their answers are ran through analytics and added to their personal dashboards. And I want to know who's adding these analytics and how are they interpreting and is it accurate? Depending upon the answers and the program will flag whether your child needs to go into group or individual counseling. Here are the same questions again, sometimes using different verbiage. It's a psychological process when a question is asked multiple times and stated slightly differently each time. It determines if the child is telling the truth. A lot of corporations, military, many others use this type of psychological profiling strategy. They're putting kids in buckets and they're doing exactly what they tell the kids not to do, which is profile. Student data privacy risks, exploitation by third party use, data breaches and ransomware, uh, like our .gov website for the unemployment offices that's been hacked twice already. Other student issue data issues are uh, this information can be online indefinitely and accessed by who knows who and used at a later date. Student data ownership is unclear. Student data can be used to stereotype the students. Again, these are being ran through analytics. Privacy laws are not strong enough to protect our students. Surveys are provided to students without validity of consent or even when parents have opted out. K through 12 education is the number one target for cyber attacks according to the um, Government Accountability Office. And you can look that information up yourself. These are just two examples of 
malware and identity theft that has gone through two different schools, uh, one in Kentucky and then San Diego University. Other school districts and parents are fighting back. Um, in Rare Move, board rejects contract proposal. We have uh, North Carolina um, wants to stop the student spying program and other parents are creating opt-out forms. Um, there was Minnesota, Wyoming. There are plenty of other places that are fighting back and school boards that are rejecting these proposals and not, remember, we're paying for this. I think it was $80,000 just for the panorama. Doesn't include the uh, jobs that they're creating around implementation of this program or the portrait of a graduate. Even if you're not in Boone County Schools, you need to contact your legislators because they are, KDE is trying to roll this out at the state level. It's currently going through the Education Committee. So we will put a link in to find your legislators who represent you and your voice. Um, this is a letter from North Carolina uh, saying, no, we don't want this. Um, one of these is from Indianapolis for mental health surveys. The board voted to kill it without explanation and also in Wyoming. So we have some people in the United States with common sense. Our Boone County School Board voted unanimously to implement Portrait of a Graduate and um, the Panorama, and they go hand in hand. So these are the contact information for the emails for our school board. Tell them we don't wanna spend our tax dollars on this. We don't want you spying on our children. This information is none of your business. So we attended the Teaching and Learning Committee meeting all committee meetings are open to the public, so if you can attend any of them, you really should to see what's going on in the district. On the agenda, the facilitator establishes norms for working as a group, and one of those happens to be hard on issues, soft on people, you know, because we have to avoid accountability. Okay, parents, here's your homework. Look up deeper learning, portrait of a graduate. Deeper learning actually means quality data for analytics. Panorama is Portrait of a Graduate is Patel for Kids. So explain something to me. Julia Pyle is no longer on the school board. She lost to Cindy Young. So why is she on this committee? Also, feel free to mark your calendars for the upcoming meetings, which are open to the public. You'd be surprised what you learn in these meetings. And you may be appalled by listening to what some of the district is rolling out. So the goals in Portrait of a Graduate are to measure your students to a new standard. One of those is a learner mindset. And you can read through each of these and how they're asking questions. Keep in mind, this one's for elementary school students. The learner mi mindset for secondary. Communication for elementary school students. Communication for secondary. Collaboration for elementary collaboration for secondary. Feel free to pause the podcast so that you can actually see what questions they're applying to your child. This one's my favorite measurement of my student, global citizenship for elementary school, and there's one for secondary as well. But if you notice, it says exercise rights and obligations of citizenship at a local, state, national, and global level because we need more Greta Thunbergs. Thank you. Global Citizenship Secondary. So this is a goal in your child's dashboard. It's going to be housed in a G Suite that goes with them from school to school throughout their entire education. They said this starts at pre-K and follows them through their senior year. And these are the measurements they're looking at every year. So apparently this is more important than academics and educating our students. And do we not need American citizenship? Do we not need civics at the local level? Do these kids even know the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution? What are they teaching our kids in order to achieve these made up goals? And again, I'll say it, what parent in our community said they wanted their child to be a global citizen? Integrity for elementary, adhere consistently to a set of core values that are evident in choices and behaviors. Again, whose core values and who's putting in these algorithms and analytics and deciding what these core values are? It's not you parents. This one's integrity for secondary. Again, they're holding them to a set of core values. 
they're not even telling us what those are communication again stop the slides and really read over what they're evaluating kindergartners through second grade and third through fifth graders on communication for secondary continued communication for secondary